extensile anterolateral approach to the pilon fracture. A brief video. This video was prepared from an article source that cited below. We thank the authors, Mathieu Assel et al. Surgical technique. A tourniquet is applied. If an external fixator has been previously placed, it is usually left in place and the lower limbs draped in the sterile field from the level of the tourniquet to the toes. Exsanguination of the limb is accomplished only by elevating the lower extremity and not with use of any compressive bandages. Figure 1 A and B shows the line of the skin incision as it is marked on the right limb. The incision is begun 10 mm below the tip of the medial malleolus and proceeds transversely across the ankle to a point just lateral to the midline and then turns at a 105 to 110 degree angle, proceeding proximally 10 mm lateral to the tibial crest. Thus, the incision lies laterally to the tibialis anterior tendon. It is important to make the turn in the incision at the 105 to 110 degree angle and not more acutely approaching 90 degrees. Generally, the vertical limb of the incision measures 15 cm but can be extended more proximally as desired. In situations with more extensive injury to the lateral column of the distal tibia, the point of the turn can be moved a bit more laterally. The transverse and vertical limbs of the incision are made using a number 24 scalpel blade, but the 105 to 110 degree turn is made with a number 15 blade which permits the incision to be perfectly perpendicular to the plane of the skin, and skiving of the tissues is avoided. The incision is carried down through the subcutaneous tissue, fig, 2a, and the full thickness flap is elevated, fig, 2b. The incision continues onto the extensor retinaculum, fig, 2c, exposing the underlying tibialis anterior tendon. The retinaculum is incised, with an attempt to leave the tibialis anterior tendon undisturbed in its sheath. This is not always possible, because it is intimately connected to the retinaculum, and thus frequently the sheath is opened, fig. 3a. The inferior extensor retinaculum is opened, following the line of the incision. The full thickness flap is retracted medially while the tendon of the tibialis anterior is retracted laterally, fig. 3b, c. The flap is handled atraumatically without strong retraction or use of forceps, frequently using nylon sutures in the skin to apply traction. At the level of the ankle joint, the articular capsule is opened longitudinally, exposing the talus, fig, 4, arrow points to talus. Subperiosteal dissection exposes the ankle joint and fracture site, fig, 5a, and retraction of the tissues laterally exposes the entire lateral articular fragment of chaput, fig. 5b, c. The articular surface is reduced progressively, frequently beginning with any displaced lateral column fragments, chaput. The reduction proceeds from posterior to anterior and lateral to medial, and the articular fragments are provisionally stabilized with Kirchner wires, first the chaput fragment, figure, and then the anteromedial articular fragment, figure. Once the articular block has been reconstituted, it is joined to the proximal fragment. It is not necessary to anatomically reduce metaphyseal or diaphyseal fragments, but length and alignment are restored. 
specific plate placement is determined by the nature of the fracture, but frequently two plates are used, one anterolateral and the other medial. For proximal extension of the fracture, the plates are introduced through the open incision and slid proximally subcutaneously. The holes in the plate can be easily palpated and screws inserted through small incisions. Depending on the size of the metaphyseal defect, autogenous bone graft or bone graft substitute is added. Previously, we always fixed the fibula when we placed the bridging external fixator, which followed the guidelines of the AO and others who described an anterolateral fragment of tibia that remained connected to the fibula, and if one reduced the fibula, this fragment would be in near anatomic position. Thus, it could be used as a template for the reduction of the pilon. However, we found that there were cases of malreduction of the fibula, which made reduction of the pilon more difficult. Therefore, we changed our approach and decided not to fix the fibula initially. At definitive surgery, the pilon is approached first. After fixation of the pilon fracture, we use a posterolateral skin incision to place the plate, one-third tubular, or 3.5 mm, on the lateral aspect of the fibula. The fibula is fixed to increase the stability of the pilon fixation. Closure of the wound begins with the extensor retinaculum, with interrupted 2-0 vicral, polyglactin 910, Johnson Johnson International, Brussels, Belgium, sutures, figure. The subcutaneous tissue is then closed with the same size vicral suture, and the skin, with interrupted 3-0 nylon suture using the orgo diuresis W modification of Donati, figure. Closure of the wound begins with the extensor retinaculum, with interrupted 2-0 vicral, polyglactin 910, Johnson & Johnson International, Brussels, Belgium, sutures, figure. The subcutaneous tissue is then closed with the same size vicral suture, and the skin, with interrupted 3-0 nylon suture using the orgo diuresis W modification of Donati, figure. Postoperatively, patients are maintained at bed rest for 48 to 72 hours, with the limb elevated. If the wound appears satisfactory after that time, the patient begins ambulation, allowing only 10 kilograms of weight bearing for 10 to 12 weeks. Range of motion and muscle strengthening exercises are prescribed. The patient is discharged with a removable splint to prevent equinus deformity. This video was prepared from an article source that cited below. We thank the authors, Matthew Assel et al. Thank <laughs> you.